What is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find my written work and my running back rankings for Dynasty Leagues, Devi Leagues, and the 2023 rookie class at NoahMoreParties.com. And I am back for another Saturday at the desk uh, because I have another special guest. Last week we talked to uh, Angelo. This week we are talking to uh, one of the biggest YouTube scouting guys, you know, now doing some work like actually in the league. We got Brett Coleman today. So let me bring him on. Uh, there we go. We got Brett Coleman. How's it going, Brett? I appreciate you uh, making time for me this morning. Tell the people what's up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. You know, I'm in the middle of draft season, so I'm almost 80% of the way through skill position players right now, you know, because I, I did a lot of defense first. And so hopefully I'm going to try to get my, my dynasty rankings out pretty soon after the draft. I know a lot of people get the night of the draft, and I have no idea how they managed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Respect the grind. So for sure. I'm, I'm hoping just to be ready by like early May. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel that. I mean, I, I only do running back and I've been, I'm only like halfway through the class as far as like film study goes. So I definitely feel you. To kick things off, I guess, I, I just want to get your get your opinion on like the overall strength of this class. I know we've been hearing about, you know, Bijan and Tank Bigsby and Zach Evans and Jameer Gibbs for like three years now. Some of them since they were in high school, like 2023 for like the fantasy community, the dynasty community has been like, you know, the city on a hill We're we're looking forward to that. Like people have been hoarding picks for years. How do you feel, you know, wherever you're at in the process with these running backs, like how do you feel about the overall strength of the class um, kind of as a whole? Uh, sorry, my cat just jumped in my lap, of course, right when that. Um, I, I, this is one of the stronger running back classes that I can remember, not just because there is the technical talent at the top uh, with Bijan, but there's a lot of, and I don't want to say that COVID was good, but one of the side effects of COVID kind of, you know, scrambling up college football for a couple of years is that a lot of guys' timelines in terms of when they draft got mixed up a little bit. So you've got a whole lot of talent that in, in normal circumstances would have come out earlier that is now coming out this year. Like I look at Zach Charbonnet, honestly, I was stunned that he didn't come out last year, but he's coming out this year. Right. He's one of my favorite backs in this class. You know, I, I would say Roshan Johnson is another one who is coming out this year that if he was anywhere other than Texas and, you know, if, if uh, COVID had not happened the way it did, maybe he would have transferred. But like, he's another one who, who came out and went to the Senior Bowl, who I think that in another program, he was the lead dog. He probably would have come out as a junior and been one of the my, my favorite guys last year, too. So it's an exceptionally deep running back class. Um, there's a lot of different role players for teams that are building committees uh, like Jameer Gibbs. I do not see him as, uh, as like a full-time if you're looking for like a receiving back he's going to be the top role player on the board for that you know even down to like day three guys that i'm a, a huge 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 fan of well i guess it depends on if you consider kendra miller a day three guy or not he's getting some round three buzz i personally think he's like a, a fourth type guy but deuce vaughn is another day three guy that i'm even though he's a total size outlier in every sense of the word I am absolutely obsessed with his tape. So just putting down the board from the top with Bijan all the way down to day three guys. It's one of the more stacked running back classes that we've had in a while. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I see a lot of people kind of, I don't know, talking about it as if it's underwhelming. And I guess maybe if you thought we were going to get five you know, Saquon Barkley's in the first round um, this year, then it's a little underwhelming. But yeah, there's a ton of good guys in this class, especially like late in the draft. One thing I want to do um, is kind of look back a little bit to last year's class. Uh, there, there's a video that you put out before last season um, called the rookie running backs that will win your league um, on your on your YouTube channel, Brett Coleman. Um, you can also find Brett at uh, on Twitter at Brett Coleman. The rookie running backs that will win you your league. And you pretty much nailed every take in that video. I, I watched it again like a couple days ago, putting together this show sheet. And I don't think you, <laughs> I think you were literally not wrong on anything. One of the guys you covered was Brian Robinson. Um, and you said, Quote, I truly think that he's better than Antonio Gibson at all of the little things when it comes to actually playing the position. Don't be shocked if Robinson ends up getting more carries than Gibson this year. Nailed that. And, you know, looking forward to this year, we don't know landing spots for these rookies yet, but who's a guy in this class who you view as similar to Brian Robinson? Maybe not as like a comp necessarily, but similar to him in the way that he's dependable, does the little things well, and could usurp a, you know, a talented back like 
an Antonio Gibson type who's talented but maybe doesn't have a lot of the the refinement, you know, currently in the NFL. Who, who's a guy in this class who you who you kind of view similarly? Uh, I would say Charbonnet. Charbonnet is like just a great all around back. Um, you know, he's not he's not as good as Bijan, but I don't think I don't think he's like amazingly far off, right? You know, he's going to go in the second round and be a starting running back somewhere, or mm-hmm. maybe top of the third at the latest. Um, Ty J Spears is somebody really, really excited about. I know Gibbs gets the Camara comp thrown around all the time. To me, Spears is is closer to Camara than than Gibbs is. Gibbs' best case scenario is Jamal Charles with less contact balance. But again, we got to hit like every single green light to make that happen. Ty J, I think, with his contact balance and, and everything like that, um, like I, I would give some low red zone carries to Ty J Spears and feel a lot better about it than Gibbs. So I think Gibbs is more in the in the Camara line if you're for the right spot. I'm all in. And this one, I know you disagree with, but I'm a huge Israel Banacanda guy. Okay. He has to go to the right spot, mm-hmm. like a wide zone system. You go to Miami with Mike McDaniel, you know, maybe Kyle Shanahan spends another third round pick on a running back. I, I get it's it's system dependent because he is more of a slashed and wide zone guy than, than oh, we're going to run counter and say, go read it correctly. But if he goes to the right spot, I think he could be absolutely insane. He's very young. He's the youngest rookie running back. He's almost 220 pounds, runs four three jumps 41 inches hyper productive despite being very very young i think he still has a lot of room to grow in terms of vision and patience and all that stuff he just kind of wants to hit everything right now yeah but if he just if he goes to a good running backs coach that helps him kind of just slow down a little bit uh so that he can hit the stuff that isn't wide zone i think he could be really really special i'm kind of getting there on izzy abanacanda i listened to uh, the sumer sports show with eric eager and and Thomas Dimitrov last night, actually. And they were talking a little bit uh, towards the end of the show about how styles make fights and the idea of scouting scouting traits versus scouting scheme fit and how do you balance that in like NFL personnel departments. I, th- I thought it was a really interesting discussion, but yeah, it, it's kind of got me thinking about these guys who have these really nice traits and it's just about finding the scheme fit. Because I do think, I mean, obviously Abanacanda has great traits in a lot of ways like 215 obviously a ton of speed he's explosive and that's not a guy who's going to be you know a plug and play everywhere but right in in the right system mm-hmm. there's not a, there's not a lot of guys who can like make the most of opportunities set up for them as much as a Banacanda can a Banacanda can even if he's not a guy who's going to like <laughs> create those opportunities for himself in that same video that same rookie running backs video you talked about Damian Pierce and you said he is exceptionally powerful his tackle breaking rate is just insane he has great feet wonderful vision catches the ball well out of the backfield really all of these things, but yet Florida underutilized him. And, and kind of this, maybe the same kind of concept of scouting traits versus um, scheme fit or, or college production. Is there a guy in this class who's kind of raw traits to you far outweigh his production in college the way Pierce's did? And maybe the answer is no. And that's, you know, that's useful information as well. Like there's, there's not a Pierce in every you know, class. Pierce, you know? Pierce was such a unique thing, right? Like he, he was a great player stuck with a staff that didn't know how to use him. And that just doesn't, I don't necessarily think there's a, a same, you know, situational comparison. The closest one, I guess, would be Roshan. But it's not because the staff underutilized him. It's because he was behind Bijan. Yeah. But he was hyper efficient with his touches that he had behind Bijan. Um, I don't necessarily think that he's quite as talented as Pierce. But I think that's probably the closest we're going to get in terms of like, again, if he was literally anywhere else, he would have been way, way, way productive. Right. Okay. So maybe you haven't, you know, sifted through all the rankings yet. You seem pretty high on Roshan. Where do you... Where do you put him kind of in the hierarchy of this class? Is he one of the, is he up there with like Charbonnet with you? Or is he down there with the, you know, the day three guys? I think, you know, considering his versatility, because I I do think he catches the ball well. I think he pass protects. Um, He is a former quarterback in high school. So you can kind of do some wacky stuff in the red zone with him. And I just think he's a really solid runner. I think he's quicker than he gets given credit for. I think he's more powerful than he gets given credit for. And he's not as traitsy as some of the top guys in this class i still have him as a top 10 running back in this class i haven't quite ordered them i haven't finalized my order i know he's 
definitely going to be somewhere between five and ten behind a Banacanda, behind Spears, behind Bijan, obviously. I'm kind of weighing how much I value his role paired to like pure receiving backs like Gibbs because Gibbs is going to convert a lot of third downs, but I don't necessarily think he's going to like punch it home in the red zone, mm -hmm. which in the end, points matter in the NFL. I, I would much rather give red zone touches to Roshan than Gibbs. So I'm kind of weighing, okay, how much do I value the receiving ability versus the ability to score? I, I haven't quite finalized that yet, but I know he's somewhere between five and 10 in this class. Okay. Yeah. I, I've kind of landed on... I, I haven't watched Roshan yet, but just on the on the database stuff that I like to look at, he looks looks pretty similar, um, kind of you know bird's eye view wise to like Brian Robinson last year. Um, mm -hmm. Just a guy who's just good at everything, or at least yeah. you know solid. And I wrote a, a recent article about Roshan Johnson talking about the uh, or I touched a little bit on the the former quarterback thing. Like he even he entered Texas throwing some passes, and you know he was listed as a quarterback. I think as a freshman on the roster. Like if anybody's going to be the next Taysom Hill, who can just you know play special teams and tight end and line up in the backfield and throw, you know, if anybody's going to be the next Taysom Hill, why can't it be Roshan Johnson? I'm not necessarily predicting that, but some mad scientist coach could get their hands on that guy and do some creative things. Last year, in your running back rankings video, you were pretty high on Jerome Ford. I think these were all tier two guys for you. Jerome Ford, Rashad White, Pierre Strong, Keonta Ingram, and Ty Chandler. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody bats 100%. Those guys didn't really work out as rookies. Do you, out of that group, do you have hope for any of those guys like in dynasty leagues um, after underwhelming... Uh, rookie seasons in the NFL you know it's it's tough to say because at least half of those guys just went to situations where they weren't getting touches because of where they were like you know yeah. Ty Chandler went to Minnesota he's not getting touches there <laughs> right away uh Pierre Long went to New England where they had like a four deep backfield and I know that they see a future role for him in the vein of James White but in the backfield as, as the way it was constructed last year he wasn't going to get touches like it was going to be Ramondre it was going to be Damien uh there was no way for him uh, Rashad White, I think, justified it when he was on the field, but the Bucks, for whatever reason, just refused <laughs> to really lean into him versus Fournette, even though Fournette looked like he was cement. So a, a lot of them, I think, it was more situation like where you where you land, uh, which is which is why dynasty rankings for me are always going to be different than pre-draft rankings, right? Because it mm -hmm. depends on where you go. Big reason why I was so high on Tyler Algier last year, um, and I had him as like one of my top three rookie running backs that would like win your league, even though he was a fifth round pick. And I didn't have him among my top pre-drive rankings was where he went. He went to Atlanta. There wasn't as much competition there to fit his skill set. His only real competition was Cordero Patterson, who's like 30 plus. And I was like, they're not going to feed CP a bunch of touches over, over him. They're going to want to preserve Patterson for like high leverage down, passing situations, all that kind of stuff. And Algier ran for a thousand yards as like a fifth round pick. So I think situation is everything. Uh, and why you kind of have to divorce pre-draft rankings from post-draft rankings. And the, the people who do really well in Dynasty are the people who can scout talent pre-draft and then apply it to decisions post-draft and just kind of like make a Venn diagram out of it and see who who, who falls in the middle. Right, right. Yeah, I think a lot of people want to victory lap or whatever. Like I had so-and-so at RB8 and they went in the third round. It's like, okay, but now he's the backup behind three guys. You know, it's it's just a different game like scouting talent versus putting together dynasty rankings. So it, yeah, I, I do think it's important to be to be flexible in that way and re like, you know, recognize I was super high on Jerome Ford, but like he's not going to play in front of Nick Chubb. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Let's go back to B. John Robinson for a second. We touched on him a little bit in the Roshan Johnson conver conversation. Um, I've seen all sorts of thrown out for Bijan. Do you have one that you like? He reminds me a lot of Le'Veon Bell. And, th and that's kind of where, I, where I've where i said, like, it's a little bit different um, in terms of, like, his stance that he gets into when he's shaking somebody in space. But, like, he doesn't go super wide on the dead leg like Le'Veon mm -hmm. did. But he still has a pretty good dead leg. Uh, but in terms of vision, patience, receiving ability, overall versatility, size, he's very, very, very prime. Le'Veon Bell to me after Le'Veon lost the weight. People forget that rookie Le'Veon Bell when he came in at like 240 was not the Le'Veon Bell that people remember. He had to drop like 20 pounds before mm -hmm. he became the best running back in the league. I think Bijan's going to hit the league at that and be prime Le'Veon immediately. And that's a really terrifying thing to say. <laughs> um, but if he goes to oh man, pie in the sky, Philly could lead the league in rushing as a rookie. Right. You know, if he's going to the Chargers and Eckler gets traded, he could lead the league in touchdowns as a rookie. The, the, situationally, this could be the the best combination of 
talent and situation that Dynasty fantasy football has seen maybe since Zeke. And yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, we've had a lot of those guys. Well, I mean, we don't get a lot of those guys. But like Saquon went to a terrible team. Uh, Zeke went to a, you know, a good fit there. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, you know, the offensive line ended up being good there early, struggling later, but that offense isn't really very good. Uh, Todd Gurley was on a terrible, like, we don't often get the, like, super high-end running back prospects in spots where we would ideally like to see them, and it's exciting that we might get to see that for Bijan. I do like the Le'Veon Bell comp a little bit, and I I think um, he's, he's not a guy who's gonna, you know, land on comps lists if people are using, like, athleticism measures and, you know, measurables from the comp, because Bell did enter the league really big, and he ran a 4-6, at like 240, yeah. which, you know, for the speed score, you know, cultists, that's that's good. But then when he slims down to 220 or 225 or whatever it was, I'm sure he was down in the low four fives. So, yeah, that... Uh, Maybe even faster, to be honest. Right, yeah. Like he, he was moving. Yeah. We, we, we got Bijan, who was the number one running back in his class coming out of high school. The guy he, he leapfrogged in that class was Zach Evans. I'm a big Zach Evans guy. Please tell me that you're also a Zach Evans guy. Uh, what do you like and dislike about his game? Kind of where do you see him fitting in uh, in the NFL? I'll be honest, I haven't got to him yet. Okay. I, I, I do know you're a Zach Evans guy. I've, I've seen the videos and I, I know you're big on him. I have not got to him yet because there's like 40 running backs in this class. Yeah, yeah. But Fair. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to in the next couple of weeks. Fair. Well, hopefully I can... Uh... I can influence your priors enough that you you view him with a uh, with a sympathetic lens. Uh, <laughs> all right, have have you watched uh, have you watched A Chain yet? Yeah, I he's another one of these like role players where I'm like, okay, it depends on where he's going, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if he's going to Sean Payton in Denver, where I in my in the back of my head I'm like, okay, he's gonna get the Reggie Bush touches. I, I could see it. Um, I could see it because he's got blinding speed. He's better outside than inside, obviously. He as strict a role player as it gets to me. But where I think I really find most value for him is in best ball mm. because it only takes one touch. Right. And I think that we could get a 40-yard touchdown out of him with higher regularity than a lot of the guys in this class because it literally just takes one touch. So in best ball in particular, he's one of the guys that I'm targeting pretty late. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that one touch could even be like a punt return or a kick return or something. Um, so, or so you, whatever. Yeah. 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 So you don't, so strictly role player. So, um, I have on the show sheet here on a, on a zero to 10 scale <laughs> with zero is Jason Huntley, five is Raheem Mostert and 10 is Jamal Charles, Chris Johnson, kind of whatever flavor of small, fast running back you want. Where on that zero to 10 scale would you put a chain? I'm hoping he's Raheem Mostert. Okay. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping. Like somewhere between four and six. Okay. Is it? That's, that's it right down the middle of the fairway for me. Is it? Is it just? Is it just the size concerns for you, or do you have other questions about his game? It's it's size. Like he's. It's really hard to play running back in the NFL when you're small. It's really really hard. And I know that every once in a while, you know, a Darren Sproles happens. But like people forget, Sproles was thick. Like he yeah. built and Jamal Charles, again, we're looking for an outlier from 2007, like 15 years. And Charles was like 11 pounds heavier. Exactly. So it's like you can draft him, better not do it earlier than a lot of the guys that are pushing, you know, 200 plus. Because like it is exceptionally hard to play running back in the NFL when you are that size. It doesn't mean he can't do it, but it means that, you know, on any given game, the most touches he's going to get is like 10 probably. Right. And you're, you're hoping he breaks one, which is why to me it's like best ball only. Okay. Okay, you do seem a little bit more excited about Deuce Vaughn than you are about A Chain. Is the difference there the like receiving skill, like downfield ability, like route running ability um, with Vaughn, or am I am I misreading this? And you're kind of you know at a similar level on both of them. It's and for Vaughn, the reason why I like him more is it's about build. Right? Okay, he's a little bit more rocked up, and so I think he can take contact better than A Chain. And even just looking on film, I felt Vaughn's contact balance was better. And so even though, again, Vaughn himself is a size outlier, you're looking at build, you're looking at how their body looks like it could take contact. You know, you're watching him take hits from 240-pound linebackers and, and people are bouncing off. I just saw more of that with Vaughn. Again, I still see Vaughn as a, as a day three running back because we're hoping and praying. But in terms of small running backs, I think that Vaughn is a little bit more built to handle it than A-Chain is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I can get on board with that because Vaughn's like, he's not even 5'6". I'm 5'7 and like 150. I can't imagine being 5'5 five, five and 180. Like we know that that's small for a running back, but that is just absolutely rocked up for 
any normal human, like yeah. 180 pounds at five foot five, the dude is like a fire hydrant. It's like tackling a tree stump. Right. right. <laughs> that's, that's really what it's about. Yeah. So, and, and A chain, I can't remember what A chain's height is, but like he's just. He's like 5'8. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a very, very different build, even though, you know, the, the weight numbers are similar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, you're a Colts guy. Uh, let's talk about Jonathan Taylor. He's currently the RB4, you know, kind of consensus dynasty rankings. He's behind Bijan, he's behind Brees Hall, he's behind Kenneth Walker, and he's right ahead of guys like McCaffrey, Etienne, and Barkley. It's been a little bit of an up and down, you know, he's, he's, he's obviously a great player. There's no questions about his ability, but just given the situation in Indianapolis, do you, do you think that consensus is just right on him? A little high, a little low? Like where, where do you see Jonathan Taylor falling in like the overall landscape and dynasty right now? You know, I think a, a lot of what happened last year, which is making people cool off on JT is it wasn't really his fault. The offensive line took a long time to kind of get to, um, you know, the Bernhard Ryman struggled really early on and then kind of got it going in the last half of the year. The right guard situation was an absolute disaster. They suffered a bunch of injuries. They were shuffling guys around and their quarterback couldn't move. So teams just teed off on him um, and, and got him off the field. So they weren't converting a lot of first downs. And when you're converting first downs, your running backs are generally getting more carries, more touches, in addition to Taylor himself also dealing with, with you know, getting banged up too. So it was just kind of a disaster all the way around that wasn't really his fault. Looking at the Colts this year, absolutely expect the offensive line to be better. Um, I expect the quarterback situation to be better, whether it's Anthony Richardson or Lamar. I think it's going to be one of those two. Either way, both of those guys would help the run game massively because you can run a whole bunch of stuff with them that you couldn't do with Matt Ryan, which will make Jonathan Taylor's life easier if quarterback is also a running threat. Uh, and literally, they just need to draft the right guard who won't shit his pants every single time on third down, and they'll be fine as an offense. So I think the Colts are going to be a lot better this year than they were last year, and generally better teams produce more opportunities for running backs. So if Taylor stays healthy, he's going to get more red zone touches. He's going to get you know more early down touches, and he'll be back to being JT, and everybody's going to be like, oh, we panicked for nothing. And we'll, we'll say, I told you so. Another dynasty question for you. Is, that, is there, so we talked about Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson and kind of the dynamic there where like a, a dependable rookie comes in and kind of supplants a, you know, an athletic, talented, you know, explosive incumbent who just, you know, fumbles mm. a lot or misses holes or, you know, doesn't block well, you know, whatever it is where like a, a talented player kind of loses his spot. Is there another guy around the league um, right now who people like is talented and explosive, but just might be susceptible to kind of getting jumped on the depth chart by a guy like Brian Robinson or a guy like Roshan Johnson. Is there another guy out there who people should like low-key maybe look to trade before the draft? Mm, that's a really good question. I'm, trying to, I'm looking through depth charts right now <laughs> and looking at samples. I, I don't have a name jumping out to me either other than maybe ETN, but I feel like he's explosive enough that maybe he's uh, a and, little and bit I more. Think, honestly, their ideal goal for ETN is, is going to be as part of a committee anyway. Right? Yeah. I guess this is going to sound weird, but I guess Dalvin. Okay. Just because, you know, age, ability. I don't get the sense that the Vikings have the same level of commitment to Dalvin that they did two years ago. He is somebody who I think is a candidate to get traded. So, but, and, and we don't know where he's going to go to. Like, I think having him on the roster fine, but I'd rather get rid of them a year too early than a year too late, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And somebody will give up assets because they're going to see Book and say, oh, yes, please. I would say uh, see the Eagles backfield, they're probably going to draft somebody because right now it's just Kenneth Gainwell and like Penny Austin Scott. They, they brought in Penny. Penny. Yeah. Trey but Sermon's like... like... You know, the, the Penny thing is like, you know, he's the home run swing, but are you going to get more than five games out of him? Yeah. So I, I don't necessarily think people would be too surprised if Penny didn't didn't end up popping off because usually it's going to be about durability. There's not, yeah, there's not any situations that I can think of around the league right now where I'm like, that's definitely an overvalued mid running back. That's the starter. That's going to get replaced by a third rounder. Okay. Like again, last year's situation w with Robinson and with Pierce, both of those situations were so not normal, which is why I made the video on it of like, you know, ignore the guys that went ahead of them focus on these situations because this is this is the market inefficiency you can capitalize on as of right now in the draft i don't necessarily see one of those post draft maybe right we'll have to see where guys where guys fall and everything like that but as of right now it's kind of tough to predict that. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just scrolling here through dynasty rankings. I think two names that kind of pop out to me as guys who we know they're good. You know, we don't necessarily like Travis Etienne. I like Travis Etienne. He's the current RB6 in Dynasty. Uh, people are drafting him as if he's going to be an elite running back, and he might be. But who knows what that situation looks like if James Robinson doesn't tear his Achilles um, and, you know, is you know, ineffective. Like, if, if James Robinson is peak James Robinson, is that like a 50-50 split? Does Travis Etienne ever vault into the top five Dynasty running backs? And then Tony Pollard. I, I just can't trust Dallas to not want to, you know, draft Bijan or put Charbonnet in there or I don't know what they like to do in Dallas in recent years it's been we'll take our explosive players and make him the 1B I would I would be a little wary of investing in Tony Pollard and Travis Etienne right now even though I don't think they're quite as susceptible to getting replaced as like Antonio Gibson was let's go uh it's more so they're susceptible to getting a 60 40 split right 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 instead of like a 70 30 or whatever yeah uh jameer gibbs i, I want to touch on jameer gibbs a little bit more we've kind of danced around him a little bit it doesn't sound like you're super high on him i i agree with you that he's he's not alvin kamara he's just not big and powerful enough to be alvin kamara the comp that i um have gone with is reggie bush and i, I think stylistically as runners they're very different like gibbs is much more like self-contained it's like small subtle movements um to be elusive and you know pacing himself well in the open field where Reggie Bush was like flamboyant and like wide, um, really demonstrative with his cuts and things like that. But I think the ways that they might be used in the NFL are similar, which is why I'm still on board with Gibbs near the top of this running back class, even though I don't think he's like a great, you know, even probably not even a high volume runner in the NFL. Where are you kind of at on Gibbs? Is he your RB2? Is he kind of in a wait and see what sort of situation he lands in type of guy for you? So I see job at best. I don't know if you remember Job at best or not. Yeah, Enjoy. yeah, vaguely, vaguely. He he pop he pops up in my spreadsheets, but I I don't remember watching him play a lot. So he was an absolute flamethrower. One of the most fun players on the field. Great receiver. You know, again, he was that. 2000s Reggie Bush era where people started seeing running backs as like viable receiving targets mm -hmm. um, and and he was one of them but again he was similar size he's like 5'10 199 4'3 speed all like almost the same profile um, but he didn't last that long and you know unfortunately durability he, he had a very short NFL career as brilliant and explosive as he was. And I think that given the size of Jameer Gibbs, I think that he will have limited touches so that he doesn't get beat up early like Job at Best did. And I think that he can do wonderful things with those touches. I think his efficiency per touch is going to be insane, but I just, I don't necessarily think he's ever going to get the volume because of his size. Even Alabama didn't use him in the low red zone. Like they weren't giving him carries down there. They're not giving him short yardage. It was, we are throwing you the ball because you are a mismatch for every single linebacker in college football. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll like between the twenties, we'll run outside zone with you. Um, you know, we'll, we'll run like crack toss with you stuff to get you outside, but he was never going to be a workhorse in the NFL because of that size. So I think it's more so acknowledging what he is and appreciating what he is and knowing PR, he's going to be a monster and make up some ground with all those receptions. But in half PPR and dare I say standard, whoever still plays standard, <laughs> please stop. Um, I do think his value will be lessened because I just don't necessarily think he's going to get the touchdowns. And in the end, guys that get touchdowns are the ones that win you your league, unless you have absolutely outrageous catch totals, mm -hmm. um, which I maybe he'll get that, but you got to be in the right team, coach. Yeah, yeah. It's it, He definitely has the ability, but that's, yeah, very much oftentimes a matter of, you know, how, how is this coach going to use you as well as just the game environments that your team ends up in? Like, it just has to be a perfect storm for you to be like a hundred catch running back. And I think people see guys like Austin Eckler, you know, getting 200 carries a year, goal line carries, bunch of check downs. It's like the Chargers don't even want to use Austin Eckler like that. They just have to. So, you know, cause yeah. Spiller, Spiller can't play and Kelly's not that good. And, and like Gibbs, even going back to Georgia Tech, he was sharing time as a runner with like Jordan Mason. And Jordan Mason's a solid, mm -hmm. was solid. I think he where he ended up in San Francisco. He's one of those guys they've just churned through. But I mean, yeah, even back at Georgia Tech, he wasn't, you know, some high volume 20 carry per game running back. Last question. We'll, we'll get you out on this one. You talked talked a little bit, a bit about Ty J Spears. Talked a little bit about Izzy Abanacanda. You're a fan of both of them. Three other guys who are kind of in the same range for most people in this, in this class are Kendra Miller, Tank Bigsby, 
and Sean Tucker. Of those three guys, if you had to bet on one of them becoming a starting running back in the NFL for multiple seasons, so they didn't just fall ass backwards into a role and, you know, flame out after a year. This is multiple seasons, legit starting role, Kendra Miller, Tank Bigsby, or Sean Tucker. Which one you got and why? I'm between Bigsby and Tucker on that. And that, that's nothing against Kendra Miller. I actually like Kendra Miller. God, it's really tough between Bigsby and Tucker. It's like a coin flip for me. I'm going to lean Tucker just because I've been waiting for him to come out of college longer. Like I remember watching him like three years ago at this point and being like, ooh, that's going to be fun. And he, he never really took his foot off the game. I'm a big Sean Tucker guy. You know, catches the ball well, great speed outside. I'm not saying he's a flawless prospect, but if he goes to the right spot, considering his talent level, I would bet on him eventually kind of, you know, starting some games here, maybe holding on to the job for a couple of years and being a, a good value play. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I changed my running back rank. I like update them like every two weeks. And this like group of five with Spears and Abanacan in there, like get reshuffled every time, depending on like recent yeah. conversations I have, or, you know, things I see on Twitter, like that group is just so, so tight for me. Um, so yeah, you know, Tucker's kind of a Tevin Coleman, Travis Etienne spectrum type guy. So I, I could see him being a starter, but I think that's it. I, I appreciate your time, Brett. Um, follow, follow Brett Coleman on Twitter at Brett Coleman. Check him out on YouTube. You probably have. You've got like half a million subs on YouTube. So I'm, I'm advertising Brett Coleman here as if people don't know who he is, but uh, check out his work. He's one of the best guys in the space, really. Good guy, does good work. Thanks for coming on, Brett. Uh, everybody else, hit like, hit subscribe. Catch me again on Wednesday. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.